Welcome to our Sunday specials. Hospitals in Nigeria are emptying, not only doctors who are daily leaving the country, but also of patients who are finding it hard to pay for health services. They are burdened by the twin challenges of poverty and the unpleasant economic condition in the country. In this Sunday special, Abim Bolag maybe takes a look at the pains the majority of Lagos residents go through in accessing health care. A survey by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, in June 2017 showed that over 67% of Nigerians, which amounts to more than 100 million poor people, cannot afford hospital bills for the treatment of illnesses such as malaria, and that is in public health facilities. This is true for Alaya Biagba, a densely populated community in the heart of Ajibunle reputed to be Lagos' most famous slum. Like other low-income communities, Ajegunle puts a face to the statistics showing the high rate of poverty in the country. Here in Lalaya Biagba community, the oldest in Ajeromi Felodu area, a family of 12 can be seen struggling to survive in a one-room apartment. Some people sleep in a room, like 10 in a room, 4 in a room, 5 in a room. Yes, of course, 15 in a room. If possible, manage. Most people don't have a job opportunity like that. And most people are just managing, squatting with friends or squatting with family. My own company, we are more than 60. Then it's only 8 room. Then we reach like 60, yeah, something like that. So we are still managing church. Some, some guys used to sleep at church to manage themselves. Ajegunle in Yoruba translates to Fortune lives here. But it's difficult for anyone coming here to see Fortune in the community presently considered one of the poorest in the state. Basic needs of life for people here are a big deal. Attending to health problems as basic as body pains cost a fortune. Allah Biagba has the highest population and highest poverty. We are very poor. They don't have money to buy drugs. So this makes them not to go to hospital when they need to go. At times, if they go, They'll be looking for money, they will come to me as the traditional ruler. If you see where they are living, in a room, a room, 10, 12 people is living in, a, in one room. Little wonder, free medical interventions by non-government organizations like this one is more like Christmas for the residents. I have truth, truth. I don't have money, that's why I come here. If I have money, I will have go to hospital. One time that I go to the hospital, I spend a lot of money, almost 100,000. For now, they give me little one that I can take, that my body will be very okay. Going to hospital is not affordable. Their price is too much. So when they see free medical checkup like this, everybody rush down to that place to check. Oh, some, they said blood, um, blood pressure, HIV, what they are, the checkup they are doing there now, malaria, and your temperature, then your um, physiology treatment, or if you and if you need surgery, if they prescribe you for surgery, then that is what I saw in their list there. So that is where everybody is going there. I myself, I went there, but no chance to to ask the doctors, the people that is doing the test, what and what. So we go to communities every a quarter, and we don't just go to any community. We go to where you may call hard to reach your community, uh, where access to some of these basic uh, needs of life could be very difficult. Uh, we bring our aid services down to the community, down right to the grassroots. You can see from the faces of the people that you are seeing here that they fall into the category of the people we are targeting. So now we are at uh, Ajerami Felodu, we are at Ajegule. We just brought so much love for this season to Ajegule. The turnout here is an indication you know that um, Nigeria has not done well with regards to taking care of its citizens. Some of these tests that they are running here, it costs less than between 500 and 1,005. But most Nigerians can't afford it. So that's an indication that things are not really working the way they should. Two weeks ago I was in the hospital and I can tell you that the test I did was not 2,000. But as you can see now, these people here can't afford it. You know, and it, 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 it's really a, a challenge that the government needs to tackle. The people excited Liz Camper to get their health needs met at the medical outreach, but a hospital a few meters away is dull and empty. 
a ward meant for fat patients has just two been treated in a health facility big enough to accommodate more than 200 people. The owner tells me the business has remained low at the hospital. Those who desire to be treated don't have money to pay the bills. We are just surviving by the grace of God. And I don't know how those that don't own the, the building, I don't know how they survive. But we here, it's not easy because most of the time we end up doing charity. You, it now looks as if it is charity work that we are doing. Somebody will enter, you tell the person, this is how much you will pay for your treatment. Some will become hostile. Some will even start abusing us. Poverty level is much. Most of them don't have money, even to eat. Sometimes you see them entering the hospital to beg for food, and some will enter. They will be sick. If you ask them, have you eaten today? They say, I have not eaten. And you, you kind of want to give that person food before treating him or her. Perhaps a more interesting story is that of Dr. Joseph Onigide, who has been practicing for 34 years. On a visit to his health facility, I discover the story is not any different. An empty reception area that ordinarily could have been occupied by patients. Onigide tells me that 5 out of 10 patients who visit the hospital in a week beg for free services. Most of the people I see here, almost, I almost say over 80% cannot afford to pay the bills. We have to one way, find a way to help them because they are very poor. Out of 10 patients every day, you see at least five, if not <laughs> all the 10, begging that this is too high for me or some can even pay at all. In fact, some people even prefer to die. They say, let me, let me eat first than going to pay any money to the hospital. And this is very, very sad. As the hospitals are empty of patients, many doctors are leaving the country in search of better job satisfaction. The Association of Resident Doctors says 12 doctors leave Nigeria weekly to practice overseas. Onibide has thought of shutting down his hospital, but his passion to save lives seems stronger than the thoughts. Yes, almost every day I regret uh, still coming here wasting away. In fact, my wife has told me that, why are you wasting away here? Just sitting down, not treating patients, you know, money is not coming in. You are just giving, you are more or less doing charity organization. So, but because of the vision I have, number one, I have the vision of, I mean, treating the community and not just medical, you know, I also have some other uh, outreach that I give out to people. So I may have felt like running out of this place. I love this country. I love this uh, community. Unfortunately, this country is not, uh, it's not the best at this time. Funding is considered the number one challenge facing healthcare in Nigeria. Only 3 to 4% of the annual national budget is allocated to the health sector against the 15% agreed by the African Union in 2001. Poor working conditions is another. Public health experts say a community health insurance scheme needs to be introduced for the informal society as the current National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS, being run by the federal government only captures a particular section of the society. They say this is the best way people in places like Alaya Biagba will get quality health care. Abimbola Agibi, TVC News, Lagos.